All right. <coughs> what would you give for a Klondike bar? Nope, me either. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. You, up to this point, you have watched us form footings, tie rebar, install the bag system from FabForm. You've seen us place concrete in the rain. You've seen a blowout. That was in the last video. If you haven't checked that out, go check it out because you're going to see it in this video, the aftermath, a little bit of it anyway. But what you haven't seen is you've never seen us strip Maybe footings. The screws. Yeah, that's like the most riveting footage them. on the planet. Awesome. So here's how our day started. We had just placed concrete. That was a miserable day, but hey, it's a new day. And the only, as they say in special ops, the only easy day was yesterday. But it turns out yesterday was not an easy day. <laughs> Stripping footings isn't either. Anyway, so where we're starting is we're gonna pull off all those two by fours that have the orange steel mates. That's what held our vertical steel. So we need to get those out of the way, pull off the clips and pull off the one by fours and then blow off the top of the footing. What that's going to allow us to do is snap lines that represent our foundation walls. That's why we wanna to get to this right away. Sometimes we can take this step same day as we place concrete. Other times it's time to concrete's clean, still tack nails, green double chop as we roll through the video. One thing that I wanna say is don't nail these two by fours to your cleats with, well, yeah, don't nail them with screws. Don't screw them in because the screws get concrete on them. Always use nails. Somebody else made the decision to use screws. It is what it is. It wasn't the end of the world, but just generally speaking, don't use screws. Super easy to back out, but when they get full of concrete, that doesn't work so well. Okay, so these are the steel mates. I showed these to you in previous videos. We bought them. You nail them to the two by four at whatever your spacing is. Notice how easy they come out. That's really the point of this. So here's one thing you don't wanna do. Notice how I'm hitting the end of the board. What that does is it moves the direction of the steel mate, allowing it to pop out. I think that makes sense. If you just go perpendicular, you could break them. So you want to hit them from the end in the direction. As, how would I say that? You can kind of see there in the foreground how we pop them in. So go the opposite direction with the two by four. That makes sense. If you ever use these, it will make total sense. Again, don't put a screw in these. It's just kind of dumb. See the extra work I have to do because there's a screw there. It'd be nice to be forward thinking, but sometimes people get lazy and they use what's in their pouch instead of going and finding nails. It is what it is. Like I said, it's not the end of the world. We could have avoided this if we just had used nails. But wow, well, I'm done complaining. I'm done complaining. What's great about the steel mates? I know I've talked about this a few times. I'm not being paid by steel mate but rather I paid for the steel mates. So free plug to those guys, great product. Once they're tacked to those two by fours, we're just gonna leave them. Some of them are on 12 inch centers. I think almost all of them. Some are on 10 inch centers. Our typical rebar spacing for two foot walls is just, uh, oh, what is it? It can be 48 on center max. We typically aim for 36. So these being 10 inches on center, I could go 30 or I could go 40, but you get my point. One and done. I should mention that some people pull those straight up and out. You could do that. Um, it, it could be that over time we start doing that if we start breaking these. But so far, we haven't broke any. So I'm just going to keep that little three pound Fiskars Mall. I think I reviewed for JLC like 2014. I have three of them. Oh man, I love those little three pound malls. They're just great for this kind of stuff. I don't even bother carrying them in my bags. I just leave them flopping wherever. As long as we don't lose them, we're not ever gonna kill them. But I really like those little three pound malls. When it comes to stripping foundations, it really is pretty mindless. So I've got my isotunes free in. Noah's got his, we're each listening to separate music. And just go to work. Try to be organized, but this is nothing but sweat. <laughs> so listen to whatever music makes you happy. I'm going to put a discount code in the description below. I do have a partnership with Isotune, so just keeping that fully transparent. They're Bluetooth, connect to your phone, blah, 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 blah. If you get that joke, then you're as cool as, as I had hoped that you would be.
I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> all right, you got all the one by fours off. Um, I'm gonna start. I got them. I'm gonna go this way, Noah. Okay. Oh, I'm getting warm. I know me too. Huh? So I know me too. Yeah. While we're still on the subject of hearing protection, <laughs> everybody has to use their outside voices. You can see I'm not ignoring Noah, I just legitimately didn't hear him. Uh, over time, if everybody on the crew gets used to wearing hearing protection, you just learn to raise your voice. Not that you're screaming and hollering at people, but you just, hey, raise your voice loud enough to be heard. All right, all right, all right. Okay, we're off to a good start. Uh, the top is cleaned off. The one by fours are pulled off. We'll clean that up later. These are the steel mates. Some of those are 12 inch on center and some are 10 inch. Doesn't matter. Um, we're gonna leave them all on there. Our next foundation is probably later in the year and I think verts are called out at 40, uh, 48 inches on center. So we'll just go 40 inches on center and that we don't have to take those off. What we did, the very last thing before we pour is we always set up the laser and shoot. I've shown that before. And then we tack 16 duplex nails. So that is actually outside of wall going that way, outside of wall going that way. Then what we can do is snap lines and set our clips like this one. Here's the trick though. Don't strip the outside forms, otherwise you lose your layout. I know a guy that's done that before. Okay, I'm gonna get a headband. Once I get moving, I feel better, but still. Yeah. I have like, I don't know if it's a fist, but I fell like a week ago on my tailbone, and then like, or like right here, it's just like so painful. Yeah. It's just like, a, I think it's just a bone bruise or something. Yeah, it can take a while. I've done that where like my shins are all dented. It was oh. early on, I would miss and hit my shin oh. with my hammer. <laughs> oh. And when I used to ski, <clears throat> I wasn't a good skier. I was a terrible skier. Were you a good snowboarder? Um, decent. Yeah, back in the day. <clears throat> you know, we do black diamonds and without looking like morons, just snow plowing down. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, let, let's put it this way. We always did more. Yeah, I mean, you know how it is as a young guy. You are a young guy. Yeah. <clears throat> we thought it was cool to do like the steep runs. So if you ever go up to Crystal up on the left, up above the Queen chairlift, or I think it's the Rendezvous chairlift, is Cam High Campbell Basin. Mm -hmm. And it's rated double black diamond. Beautiful bowl. And so like if it really snowed, it's full of powder. Well, we'd go up there and traverse across and come down. But it was so steep, you only made like two turns that were basically like long plow turns. And then at the bottom, we would race out thinking we were so cool. But it's like the real good guys, they get you the nice S. Mm -hmm. Not us, it would just be like, like a big zigzag. <laughs> oh, we thought we were cool though. Yeah. But way better snowboarder than skier. I want to snowboard. But I used to wear the powder powder cables, powder cords. So they basically, if you go into deep powder and you lose your skis, they're gone. Yeah. So you tie them basically to your oh, boots okay. with little powder cords. Well, why am I wearing powder cords on runs that there's no powder? And I remember hitting a bump and I just go flying and the skis, they come off, but because they're tethered, then they whip back. <laughs> oh man, I was bleeding down my shin, oh. like through all of my layers. So I've got, a, yeah, I've got lots of dents on my. Yeah. Oh. Whoa, man. It just falls back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I got one. This is, I think this is my favorite trail mix. It's just the Albertsons. What are those? Little white clumps. I think they're um, yogurt covered raisins. Mm. <clears throat> yogurt is so underrated in terms of like a sweet treat. Oh yeah. Like yogurt pretzels are amazing. I'm not a pretzel guy. Nikki loves that. You get the salt and the sweet, which is which is Caramel one of my middle. Pretzels are great. Caramel pretzels, I don't like. No, you ruined Caramel. my joke. Oh, sorry. Salt and sweet. Yeah. Which is one of my middle names. Okay. Boo. I'm glad I ruined it. Also, danger safety. Fire. <laughs> Say danger safety. Yeah. That's funny. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna get this guy. You could actually go around and hook nails and snap. 
because we're just going nail to nail. So we don't actually have to work together. <laughs> you know, it's no offense. But in other words, normally you would be holding that. Yeah. But I got a nail, so. In fact, what I'll do is I'll snap this guy. Uh -huh. If you snap after going that way, and I'll just start laying clips. That's fine with me. You know what? I'll have you snap that in the middle. Because this Don't doesn't... Snap it, like, on each side? Yep. This guy doesn't have that much shock on it. Perfect. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, then I'll just come back. I might snap that again. It just, it was such a, it was really hard to get this thing flat yesterday. Really? Yeah, it just, I don't know. Like, I, I felt like we weren't working very hard. Ryan finally went home, because he had an appointment. Finally went home. Yeah, because he was up there with the concrete guys, putting the admixture in. Mm. So I'm glad you didn't come out. When I asked you to, I thought that it would be nice to have an extra person, and it would have. I'm gonna put chalk in this. Okay, so you can go that way, yeah. and the long run, I'll, I'll change. You you go and I'll, um, I'll hit it in the middle. Okay. After that, they're going to be pretty short. So why are you glad I didn't come out? Because you would have just stood around. Oh, really? I mean, it would have been nice to have you, but we just, we, we, we had one extra guy as, as it was. Oh, okay. Mostly because I don't like you, you know? Oh. Yeah. Here, I'll show you. You want to fix that real quick? Here, no, come over here, and then we'll, then we'll be on camera. Whoa. I'll show you how to fix it. Don't roll it up. Okay. And here's, we're going to go all the way out until it stops. Okay. Now, can we see why it's, there's not a knot on the line. So, that means it's inside, which means, did I fix it? No. No. Hey, your your chalk line's toast, dude. Aww. Yeah, I th I thought that might happen when the lines get old. So, it's our last one. Yeah, I'll have to check Kyle's rig see if there's any more. Hey, yep, and always keep tension so that the chalk line doesn't touch until you're ready for it to. Okay. Otherwise, you can get squiggle lines or you get multiple lines, and then we don't know. You got it nice and tight. Nice and tight. Now, what I would do is roll it up, hook that one, and come back each way. Oh, okay. And then what I'll do is start setting clips. There, Believe it or not, there actually is an art to snapping lines. And I remember being taught that, you know, I think I was still in high school, and I'd come out, and it was just, just my mentor Dave and me. So you pushed it way over, yeah. So you want to go take your thumb off? Yeah, I could see that it was pushing way over. Whoa, great! <laughs> I really hope that that camera caught that. <laughs> Good. Some guys will flip out on Instagram when they see that I'll snap something multiple times. Why? Because if you if you snap at an angle. Like if you snap straight up, which is what we want, if you snap at an angle, it can actually go either side. That worked out. It's not as bad. I mean, so, you know what comes down? I did the story last night where I was like, yeah, we have a bit of a wow, which means when people see it, they're going to go, oh, wow. <laughs> so no walk, then he goes, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's not terrible when we strung, when we strung it. We're going to have to shim up the stakes and foam it, but not a big deal. Like we've done this before. I don't know. I'll have to look. Okay, let me get. Well, I'll tell you. Bye bye. I'll take the one without the bomb. Gracias. Okay, so I'm gonna be slow. You know, because I am. Make sure that these are the right cleats. So I always put one on these corners just to kind of help hold the bottom. 
And just if you ever do this, Noah, mm -hmm. where are you at? Right so this is the part of the tab that needs to go on the black line. Yeah. I remember being taught that. And uh, of course, like an idiot, I was doing it all wrong. Uh, you want me to put nails in them? Yep. Okay. And you're probably going to be a little faster than me, so I'm going to try to... I'm going to go like basically every two feet because we're going to add cleats later and they don't all have to be nailed okay. in that way. I think we're a little low there. These clips are called spreader cleats. They're going to hold our foundation panels in place to the line, and they also keep them from spreading. <laughs> They're cleats that spread, AKA spreader cleats. Now I'm putting them about every two feet. We know we're gonna add more as we stack panels, but at this stage, every two feet is plenty. That way it goes a little faster. We do a little less nailing. This step that you can see right here with the two at corners, it really isn't needed. I've just gotten into the habit of doing it. And when I fasten them down, I don't know, I think it gives me a little bit of peace of mind that the corner's not gonna move, that's all. No, no real special reason. You could skip them, we did for years, but now we like to do them. Okay, so we're eight inch wall. Come on, Demi. And eight inch wall. Oh, I'm an idiot. Demi is an idiot. If I go there and there. And that's why we always snap our lines long. Just make it easier. And this guy. As I mentioned in the last video, we should have had the rebar caps. Well, we got the rebar caps now, and they're always bouncing off the GoPro. So <laughs> safety first, peeps, safety first. We're just tacking the cleats in place with 16 penny duplex nails, or we call them dupes, 16 dupes. Uh, remind me to tell you a funny story about that someday. We're not actually gonna use these on our foundation forms anymore. We use screws, and I'll show you that in a future video. But for now, we're just gonna go ahead and use them all up by tacking into the concrete. We get about an inch to two inches in. Hey, you wanna come over here and do me a, sol a solid? Sure. We forgot to lay out and snap this one line. Snap it? No, yeah, we didn't get layout because I had to cut out the block for this footing. Oh, yeah. So I'm gonna have you hold my tape on the line. I'm gonna mark exactly 24 feet, and then we'll go back four feet and do the same. Do you know why they call this the dumb end of the tape? Because the dumb guy holds it. Well, because the smart guy is supposed to read the tape, right? But honestly, I've I've done layout with guys where, like, we tell them burn a foot, and they burn a foot on one side, and they're not thinking on the other. So we had one where the foundation was kicked a foot. So we had to quickly form the other side and dowel it, fill it, and it was just like, it's just because the dumb guy. Mm -hmm. So there really is no such thing as the dumb end of the tape, but we're still always going to call it that. I like to have the dumb end of the tape because I know I can I can hold it <laughs> I can hold it to the line. Is this the line? Uh, yep, to the line. Okay, so we're a little off from this, so I'm glad we're redoing this. Okay, and then we'll go right back here. And you're on the black line. Yeah. Okay. Still good. Yeah. Okay. And then don't let my tape get in the water. Walk it back to me, bro. If you really want to be a jerk, you could do it. But then I would put you down in the water. In that previous clip, you could see the foundation footing with the wow. Oh, wow. Check out that wow in the foundation. Wow. I'm going to put the link above. You can rewatch that video if you want or watch it for the first time if you don't know what I'm talking about. That's where I popped a clip and the footing opened. As you could see, it really wasn't as ugly 
once we had filled in the top and troweled it flat. So <laughs> anyway, ah, what a debacle. Debacle. Here I am using my sweet, like six or seven, seven to 2022, 2016, my six year old Martinez M1 hammer. The world's probably the world's most expensive hammer, but what I feel personally is the best hammer ever invented. Not just saying that, I love this hammer. I think I'm gonna buy a special one with special colors and then never use it. With all this YouTube money, <laughs> yeah, would that it were, would that it were. Okay, so as you can see, we're just using up those dupes. You get about one to two inches in, that is all we need. The concrete is still green enough because it's been less than 24 hours since we placed it. So there's the process. The tops of the footings are stripped. Clips are gonna all be tacked. Then it is time for me to head away for the weekend. Noah wanted the work, and I gotta tell you, this kid impresses me. He works hard. He ended up stripping this, the rest of this by himself and organizing it, driving the forklift, listening to his music. Really, really helped me out because I, I was hurting after all this physically and maybe a little bit mentally too. So there it is. The rest of this video is just time lapse of Noah burning some calories. Boy, he just did an outstanding job. So hey, 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 hey. thank you all for watching. I know that this can seem a little tedious that we're breaking this up into short pieces, but it'll be in a playlist on foundations. I kind of feel like if I do this all now, then I won't have to revisit it in the future. Oh, hey, look in the foreground. There's the wow. Pretty, pretty ugly. Oh, man. It is what it is. It most definitely is not what it isn't. In the next video, I think we're going to go ahead and get into stacking panels. After that, we'll pour and then we'll show some stripping of the walls. And I'll kind of clump those together so we can just get this playlist rounded out. If you're like me, well, I just kind of want to get back to some framing content. And we've got a lot coming your way. Thank you so much. Those of you that follow along, subscribe, give it a thumbs up. It really does help me out. I really appreciate it. You're not under obligation to do it, but boy, I bet you'd feel real good about yourself if you told all your friends about this YouTube channel. <laughs> or not, I don't know. But we'll see you in the next video. Thank you, everybody.